Um, I am in the privacy of my own house in quarantine, just like you. This is Arnie. He is my little cat. But anyway, so since we're all at home, I still wanted to be able to give you guys our weekly Bible, Bible stories. So the whole month of April, we've got a brand new theme as Easter approaches. Arnie's really excited too, so that's normal. So. Come with me and we're gonna tell you a Bible story in my house. So, let's go. Hi Kids Point Kids, I have an amazing Palm Sunday lesson for you. So we're picking up God's big story in Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 to 56. You guys can grab your Bibles while you're at home and follow along with me if you'd like. So we're gonna take a look at all the amazing things Jesus did while he was here on earth. So, there were so many people in the Bible who were following Jesus and learning from his teaching. They believed that he was God's son, and that means they believed that God had sent Jesus to save everybody from their sins. So here's the thing though, not everyone was happy with Jesus' teaching. The religious leaders, they were trying to capture Jesus so that people would stop hearing him teach. On the Sunday before Passover, Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem, and people were so excited that he was there. He, they welcomed them with palm branches, and they were waving and honoring him as he was entering into their city. 
And the Passover was a feast which people were celebrating and remembering how God rescued the Israelites out of Egypt from slavery. Meanwhile, Judas, that was one of Jesus' closest friends, he went to the religious leaders with a plan. See, Judas had planned to help the religious leaders bring Jesus down. He wanted to help. And in exchange, he would get 30 pieces of silver from the religious leaders. However, believe it or not, Jesus knew that this was going to happen. He knew that God had a bigger plan through all of this. So what did Jesus do? Well, he knew that the next couple of days weren't going to be easy for his closest friends. So he took some time to prepare them for what was about to happen. So first, he shared a Passover meal with his friends. And then he led them out of the city. Meanwhile, Judas had already left them. Jesus told his friends that he would be going away soon, but that they would see him again. Now, they didn't really understand what he meant by this, but Jesus continued to lead them to a place called the Mount of Olives. When they got there, Jesus told them, you can follow and read this verse with me in Matthew 26, verse 31. It said this, this very night, you will all turn away because of me. Now, none of the disciples could ever imagine not following Jesus. And Peter, one of Jesus' closest friends, even told him that there was no way that he would stop following him. But Jesus told Peter this. He said that before the rooster crowed three times, Peter would deny Jesus three times. So you may be wondering, well, what did Jesus do next? Well, he knew that his friends were about to leave him. I mean, if I knew my friends were about to leave me, I would kind of be a little scared or maybe a little angry. But Jesus wasn't scared or he wasn't, he wasn't angry either. He invited the disciples to go and pray with him in a garden called the Garden of Gethsemane. I think I said that right. Anyway, let's continue. So they reached the garden and Jesus told the disciples to sit there while he went to pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him. So Jesus told them in Matthew chapter 26, verse 38, my soul is very sad. I feel close to death. Stay here, keep watch with me. Jesus went a little farther and prayed. He said in Matthew chapter 26, verse 39, my father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering away from me, but let what you want be done not what I want. So Jesus was asking his father if there was any way for there to be a different plan. He was asking God if there was any other way to complete his mission. After he prayed for a while, Jesus returned to his friends and he found them sleeping. Jesus woke them up and told them it was important for them to pray. Then he went away to pray for a second time. Again, he asked God if there was any other way to complete the mission he had been sent to do. Again, Jesus came back and found the disciples sleeping. So he left them and went away to pray for a third time. He prayed the same thing. He begged God to take away what was coming, but still, he completely trusted God's plan. Once again, Jesus woke up his disciples and he said, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come. The Son of Man is about to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Here comes the one who is handing me over to them. So Judas had arrived, and with him a large crowd came, carrying swords and clubs. The religious leaders had sent these angry people. So Judas told the people that he would betray Jesus with a kiss. And as soon as Judas kissed Jesus on the cheek, Jesus knew exactly what Judas was doing. But still he said this, Friend, do what you came to do. As the men grabbed Jesus, Peter pulled out his sword and cut off the ear of the high priest's servant. So what did Jesus do next? I mean, he could have tried to escape during all the commotion. He was powerful enough that he could have easily broken free from all these people who were trying to capture him. But he knew that even this was part of God's plan. He knew that the only way to complete his mission was to allow these angry people to take him away and arrest him. 
Jesus told Peter to put away his sword. He touched the servant's ear and the man was healed. Then Jesus spoke to the crowd. Am I leading a band of armed men against you? He asked. Do you have to come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courtyard teaching and you didn't arrest me. But all this has happened so that the words of the prophets would come true. The mob arrested Jesus and they took him away. Jesus' friends couldn't believe what just happened. They were so scared that they ran away, just as Jesus had predicted. So what did Jesus do? He chose to carry out his mission. He knew that he had come to earth to die on the cross for all of our sins so that we could be in relationship with God again and to be with him forever. Jesus knew that what he was about to do would bring life to everyone, but it would cost him everything. Think of all the different ways Jesus put others first. He took time to talk with his friends and prepare for them for everything that was about to happen. He prayed and asked God if there was any other way to carry out what he had come to do. In the end, he trusted God and chose to follow God's plan. He allowed the crowd to arrest him, even though he had done nothing wrong. Jesus showed us how to put others first. He showed humility, and that's what we need to remember to do too to put others first. It can be really tough for us at times when we feel like putting ourselves first. That's why we need to remember all the things that Jesus did and taught us. So let's pray and ask God to help us put others first. Dear God, this season has gone by so fast. We didn't even think we'd be able to go to the tournament and no one expected us to win it. But all the way, Coach reminded us that we're all in it together. And we did it together, all of us. God, I pitched my first no hitter. I couldn't believe it. But it wasn't just me. Danny got that short hop in the first inning and saved me. And of course, Tank stole that home run right at the fence. God, it surprised me when there was a reporter that wanted to talk to me about the no-hitter. But what surprised me even more was that she was forgetting about the rest of the team. It's like I had to go over the entire game for her to show her how great our whole team was. I told her about Tank. Tank thanked me the way she does. I even told her about Danny's mom and how she always gets us water. She's part of the team too. You know God, Coach is right. Putting the team ahead of ourselves changes a lot of things. <laughs> I gotta go. Love, Seda.